about any of the shul. So he, you know, he wants to approach me, and I say, I'm sorry, I'm having a night. It's my, it's my holiday. So I said, no, no, sister, I just want you to have a great evening. <laughs> so I know, I know. Shlomo, <laughs> I know, I know that you personally know every schlepper in the house. Yeah, Bukh Shem, yeah, the very <laughs> privilege. From one of the rabbis in the neighborhood. Yeah. Told the story about he was walking to your show Friday night. Yeah. So two two brothers and they were um, <coughs> something to help me out. He said, "Well, Jewish is my Sabbath. Like I don't carry money. I would like to, but I can't." And before he could finish his sentence, the the um, brother next to him said, "Don't worry, he's going over to Shlomi's place." <laughs> It says, Gimel, Zorich Litten hat Stoker beseve Ponum Jofas. You have to give Stoker with a smiling face. Besimcho or Betuf Levov. That means with great joy and mamish with a good heart. Um is einen im her oni bezara. You know something which is very, very important. Because the poor man is mamish aching, right? It's very important to say, Mamish, I feel your pain. And he's a bit angry at God, say, I'm also angry at God for you. And you have to tell him words of consolation. And this is Mamish awesome, what the Shonor says. The Imnosen of Aponim Zarafas, and if he gives it with a, with a bit of faith, the Rois hifts its chuse, then the mitzvah is not even accounted as a mitzvah. Mamish heavy. And the shach is adding, even if you give a lot. I'm giving a poor man a million dollars, but I give it not with a smiling face, then in heaven it's not even counted as a mitzvah. It's heavy, you know. I'm going backward. Base. No, we have to start from Aleph now. Same. Okay, now listen, we are, we are talking the first, remember we're learning this morning, there's two kinds of stoker. The first stoker is miser. I make a thousand dollars, I have to put aside hundred dollars for stoker. But those hundred dollars is something else. Then, when I walk on the street, I see a poor man, I'm a chiv again to give. This is a different, this is a different chiv. This is not a tense. This is like the Gemara says, Hokai Manim. You see the poor man in front of you. I tell him, listen, you know, last year I sent $100 to Israel. In the meantime, I'm, di- I'm dying here from hunger. You have to give him. But here it begins. Okay, I know the tens, I know how much to give. I made $1,000, I give him $100. I walk on the street, and we are not talking about the tenth about stoker. How much am I supposed to give? It's very important to know. So he says, Yitin kifit chanim. I ask the Yitin, how much do you need? A mom should have to ask him how much you need. Let's say, I'm Rachman. I ask him. He says, hundred dollars? I have to give him hundred dollars, if I have it. He says, thousand? If I have it. But if I'm not on the level that I can ask the poor man how much you need and I'll give it, then I have to give one-fifth. One-fifth. One-fifth of whatever you're holding at that time? Oh, this is the deepest question. One-fifth of his needs, one-fifth of what one has? Or instead of one-tenth, you give him another tenth. <coughs> so if you have a bottle of liquor, you just give him the fit. <laughs> <laughs> and you have something to smoke, really? What are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're being recorded in all directions. 
That's a good question. You know, I need mamash mafashim. I don't know. Okay. So he said like this. Again, really, I don't have the mafashim here. You know, there's a new sefer came out now on Mitzvah Stoker. Yeah. Because, you know what's so beautiful about the Bas Yosef is? He didn't write everything. He left it a little bit for the come generation to fill in, you know? There's always something left for other people. Unbelievable. Okay, so basically it says, when you walk on the street, you see a poor man, you have to fulfill his needs. And if you don't have it, give him a fifth or one tenth. If you give less, that means you have bad eyes. You know, this fifth, okay, you know, let's say, for instance, I have $1,000. What's my fifth? Twenty dollars, right? Yeah. What did I say? I said thousand, I said hundred. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, thousand. Sorry, if I have thousand dollars, it's one fifth, is two hundred dollars, right? Now I have eight hundred left, right? On the next street corner, I see another poor man. So I say, I got to give you a fifth of eight hundred, right? So this is not what we mean. We're talking about a fifth of really what you made, what you have. Not each time you see a poor man, you give him a fifth of what you have. So he says, let's say I have real estate, thousand dollars. So my stock, my real stock is, let's say, a fifth. Is I have to give him money because I have. But but after that, okay, I gave away from this real estate, my sir. So the second year, I don't have to give from the thousand dollars because I gave away from it. The next year I only have to give one fifth or one tenth of what I earned on it. You know, let's say I have an apartment house. Not from the principal, from the profit. From the profit, yeah. And this is very important. I, I told you the son that didn't do it so much. This is awesome. It says, A person should not give more than a fifth, because if you give more, you might end up that you need money yourself. But now listen to this. What? The there are more. The small letters. Okay, I say it again. You should not give away more than a fifth. That you shouldn't. God forbid, end up that you need charity. And here comes the Holy Santa's Torah. The Davke called you Mechayev. And this is only while you're alive. Avo Bishas Moisa. God forbid if a person is just about dying. Yochon on the Then you can give everything away if you want to. Sorry, what? That's it. Then you hear what the Sunday would say? The Sunday would say, he is always on the level. <laughs> he, is, <laughs> he is always on the level, that he doesn't know if he's alive tomorrow. You know, the Sunday was on that level. So but he could give everything away. Yeah. I have to tell you, 
you know when the Holy Sons have passed away, then his son, the Holy Shinnah, would say like this. If I were to say that my father was the biggest Goan in the world, I don't know, maybe there's somewhere in, in, in Morocco a bigger Goan than him. If I would say my father was the biggest, was part of the biggest uh, mamish pray man, maybe there's somebody. And again, if I would say my father gave away most, there's nobody like him giving stoker, I still don't know. But one thing I can say, there was never in the world someone who was all three together. He was mamish, the Omet had Torah, right? And the Omet had Tfilah, and the Omet had Tfilah. So here comes just one story. Um, you know, it says in, Ka in Kabbalah that of Sukkot, you should give a lot of stock. Because what's basically what Sukkot is all about, because after, after Yom Kippur, I realize I really don't deserve anything. So I'm a homeless person. I'm, I'm making myself a little, a, a little bungalow outside on the street, right? And I'm ready to receive stoker from God. So that's the time to give stoker. Listen to this. The Holy Son, and you know, you always decorate the sukkah. So the Son says, by me, he says, instead of buying noy sukkah, a gift sukkah. He says, my, my noy sukkah, my decoration of the sukkah, is the sukkah I give. Okay, and this is story from Sons. And every elf yonder, like the rich people, would hide and go to Bermuda, do anything, because there would be a knock on the door. And the five sons of the son, they would go to every rich man and take a loan. <laughs> okay, the Boba Rebbe says, obviously he never paid back. But Gewalt did he pay back, right? If you give a loan to the Holy Sons, you get it back, right? Maybe not the way you think he gives it back, but you get it back. So, one Sukkot, an hour before Sukkot, the Holy Son says to his sons, Oh, I didn't do Tzoki yet. How, how will I get into Sukkot? Run fast to Moshe, get me another thousand rubles. The Yanku gave me another thousand. He comes to the rich people. And I said, oh, This is going too far. We gave this morning ten thousand rubles, now he wants again. But the most stupid thing is, the poor men, the poor people, cooked ready, baked ready. They have everything for Yontif. What, is, what does your father want now? Right? But they have their head, they come running to the sons. And they say to the Holy Sons, you know, we gave you so much money this morning. And the poor people, every, every schlepper and sons has enough to eat for 10,000 yen. What, what do you want now? So the sons of Mamish began firing. And they said, oh, you rich people, you're so insensitive to the needs of a poor man. So, okay, so he has enough now for sukkahs. But how can he have yonte when he thinks that one day after Yontif, he's poor again. So I want to give them now that at least one week after Yontif. It's wild, right? Anyway. You know, you know the famous story that um, um, the Holy Son, you know, every poor bride he'd just give everything he had. So at uh, one time, um, the Holy Shinnabon was maybe 12 years or 13 years old, and never, he never gave money to his own children. Uh, they always got gifts from the Chesidim, you know, a shirt or, or shoes, because the son they give everything away. So the Shinnabon comes in to his father, and he says, Mama, you know, my shoes are completely gone. I need money for shoes. At that moment, a uh, poor man comes in and he says, Rebbe, you know my daughter's getting married, I need money for the talus of the, of the groom. And the Holy Sansa, who didn't give money for the shoes of the Shinova, takes out a lot of money and gives it him for the talus. So the Shinova got really broke. He says, Tate, yesterday I was in the store and he bought a talus. He's just lying. So the son says to the rich, to the poor yid, do me a favor, don't forgive my son. <laughs> don't forgive him until he gets you, schnauz for you a few hundred rubles. <laughs> so the holy shin had to walk around. 
I'm willing to get leaving now. Okay, we have no concept of that. <coughs> then it says, "Ve'ein lasus ma'aseh shuloi dva mitzvah," and you should not take from the ma'aseh and do a mitzvah. You go nails to base a knesses to shuloi dva mitzvah. Rakis and lani. This is very very important. I made a thousand dollars and have to give hundred dollars for stoker, right? For ma'aseh. Then. Suddenly they make an appeal in shul who wants to give money for candles in the shul. And I think, oh, have you a hundred dollars? You can't. Because that money for my sir, your mom should have to give to the poor. As simple as it is. Mom is for the poor, yeah. Okay, basically, this is also big machlaikas. Imagine I have hundred dollars, and I have to give it to the poor, right? Can I give it as a gift to Chosen Kala? The big machlaikas. The Maram Rotenburg says you can, and all the Mephoshim say you can't. But then also, am I permitted to buy books for a shoe, for a besmedrush? A hundred dollars? I say, can I buy for that money books for a shoe? Also, a big machlaikas. Some say you can. Or imagine I say, I want to buy for a hundred dollars books, and okay, let's say Reichman. So Reichman has $400,000 a month. So he decided he, would, he makes four million a month, and he admits make four million a month. Do you know it's not to be believed? Do you know how much Reichman had? Now we went in bankrupt, but was in the notice in the New York Times. Reichman had seven hundred billion dollars. He was like two or three, rich, maybe the richest man in the world. Seven hundred billion dollars. You lose all that. Is he homeless? No, no. You see what it is. No, I tell you what happened. He built. He wanted to build a whole neighborhood in England for that money, and uh, was really good. And, and middle middle class people could move in, and then from the money which comes in, he'll pay back, right? In the meantime, suddenly everything changed, and the and the building cost more than will ever get in. So he had to give up. But he put in billions, billions, billions into into all this uh, uh, building. Yeah. What? The price of property there went down tremendously yeah. at the time. Whatever it is, yeah. He called you, Rachman, who told you? <laughs> he didn't? Chutzpah. Maybe just for that he lost money for the chutzpah. I can only tell you Without mentioning names, you know, Brother Spazer <laughs> comes to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. He goes to Toronto and he found out where Rachman Davids. And he says, I'm 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 Mamish, I'm from Israel, I'm very sick. Took a thousand dollars and gave it to him right away, you know. Shabbos morning. On Shabbos morning, yeah. <laughs> Okay, a lot of times, you know, the, but the question goes deeper. Imagine I would like very much to have a shas. And I cannot afford to buy a shas unless I can use the money of the miser. So big machlaikas, right? So big shayla. Let me add something else. I have a poor father. And because, you know, it basically means keep it up for aim. 
basically one of the top mitzvahs of honoring my father is to make sure that he has to eat. But my father happens to be a poor man. Can I take the miser and feed with that my father? It's also a big machlaikis. Like Big shot, yeah. Because you. Yeah, but you have to take care of your father besides the mice. You have a mitzvah of kibbutz up, right? Listen to me, you can out say, I'll be your to the mitzvah's film. Mitzvah's film is one mitzvah, and Stoke is another mitzvah. But still, it's I can hear both sides. Also, I want to ask on the same vein you said about Hosin and Kala. What if they're poor? Talk about that when they are poor, yeah. We say they don't need it for food, they don't need it for living. Uh-huh. I want to give them a gift, right? Is it called, is it called, first of all, I mean, you have, said the deepest shyly is when I give a gift to Chosen Khan of poor, is it called stalker or is it called luxury? Because luxury because they have the bare minimum already. There's yeah. Life is dead. But then there's also a machlaika. This mom is beautiful. Here I have thousand dollars, right? And I'm taking a hundred dollars and I say, Rabbi this is for my son. If while I'm, how do you say, lahafresh in good English, to so separating, it. separating it, put it aside for my son. If at that moment I say, and I want to buy books for this, then it's okay. Books for myself, books for the Beit Medrash. Everything, whatever it is, right? I mean, books to learn, right? But I mean, like, if you buy them for yourself, so people have to be able to see Yeah, and it has to be, to for be me, but so people can, right. has to be like a, like a library. Uh, but if, I, when I put it aside, I want it to be for the poor. You know, there's a big shine in Bovacam, I wish we would have all the time to learn. You know, if I would, let's say, imagine, um, Mamash Kibalt, maybe I bless you to get married fast. As a shem, next time I give stuck, I say, Rabbi Shlolem, here is. Bless me, I should by that time have $400,000 a month. I say, this $400,000 is for Mimi's wedding. <laughs> so, how does it sound to you? Anyway, let's see, what did you say here? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, obviously this looks to me like it's 100%. <coughs> okay, good. Next month you're giving all our mice and putting it aside for your wedding sugar. It's a deal. Yeah. Does anybody here know the biggest, I'm sure you know it from all the rabbis, the biggest schooler, if people get married, they have no children, what's the biggest Schooler, how do you say good English schooler? Uh, uh, schooler means. <laughs> schooler means. It's like a love charm, yeah. But it's like. Remedy. Uh, it's yes. a little like a little game with God. A little you get from the back door. So this is the story. I'm sure most of you remember it, but it's good to remember. A yeet comes to the Heligrad Zmina and he says, Rebbe. Mamish, I made for 20 years, we don't have children, it's heartbreaking. The Ralmina says, how much money do you really have as a wealthy man? So he says, I have 100,000 rubles. He says, okay, ask your wife if she wants to be poor, then I can bless you with children. His wife says, what good is it we have all the money when we have no children? So he sells everything, even his pillows and the blankets, he has 100,000 rubles, comes back to the Holy Radzmina, and you know, the Razmina has thousands of sperm in his room. The Razmina gets on the ladder and puts this cash sack with 100,000 rubles behind the top shelf behind his form. He comes from the either that his mom is homeless, lives on the street, has gewalt children. And the oldest boy, the one who was mom born from the Brocha, uh, is 
a gewalt. He gets engaged to, an, to another girl who's also a gewalt, but they have no money to get married. They don't have money for the wedding. So his wife says, you know, when did you go back to the Radmina? It was his blessing that we have this child. He comes back to the Radmina and he says, Rabbi Mamish, I'm sure you don't remember me. I was here 15 years ago and you blessed me with children and now my son is ready to get married. Radmina says to his Gabba, give me the letter. Takes the letter, puts his hand behind the books, takes out the 100,000 rubles. He says to him, here is the money for the wedding. He says, and don't you understand? The gates of heaven were closed. So what I did, I prepared the money for the wedding. Then I said, well, I have already money for the wedding of this boy, you know. I mean, <laughs> don't, don't let me down. Money for the poor. Yeah. Also, uh, the car, for example, giving money for research on cancer or other things that kill people. That's a very big shayla, you know. So it's like giving for the sick as opposed to the poor in a way, or research to help. I would, you know, it's a big shayla. I would say, without thinking, I would say yes, most probably, without thinking. But it could be because. Like, there's something in the Gemara that how long does it take until it really does something, right? Research might take 10 years to find out the medication for it, right? And when I have $100 here, which a poor man could use to buy, to buy a, a little onion by tomorrow, and I put the money into something which takes so long till it's used, it may not be this way, you know. It's, it's, a, this, it's already a shot, you know, I don't know. But something to think about. That, that, that's what we learned in the first halacha about Niyad. Yeah. Niyad. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. You see, it, that's, yeah, 100%. The Rashba says, Ho kai a man standing there holding out his hand, you know? I'm talking about the first tenth, not the second. What? I'm talking about the first tenth, not the second, though. Yeah, I understand, but it's still, it's, it's something to think about, you know? What about. A family who, I mean, they per se aren't poor, but have a medical emergency. Problem, yeah. And they've got to come up with suddenly, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I would say 100%. You see, if a case is standing here for me, it's, it's and yeah, this is, yeah. you know, right now in America, a little boy came from Israel, and they need $400,000 for the operation. It's 100% you can give still because you, you're giving it for this boy who needs it, right? But if I'm the heir, you know, I'm sending to Washington and officially they use the money, you know, uh, uh, f for medical research. I don't know, maybe yes, maybe not. And all those things that we probably all get in our mail, especially in America, dozens of things every week. Dozens. Asking you for your money. 200,000, right? yeah. And all, I mean, maybe some of them are no good at all. Who knows? But some of them, most of them are maybe very good things to give your money. Yeah. To. But it's not per se poor people, it's causes. It's yeah. All kinds of things. Political causes, it's also social and medical. I mean. Uh, am I permitted, let's say, let's say imagine there is an. And uh, for the Russian Jews, there is not enough schools. Can I take money of my say and build a school for them? I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe not. I would say it's not worse than buying books, right? Who knows? We'll learn one more thing because someone asked me something. What? I tell you, Joni, you ask a very deep question, but I tell you something very, even more deep. According to the Gemara, when someone asks you, you're not permitted to ask questions. Unbelievable. You know, like I say, ah, most homeless people are dope addicts, right? This little dope, this little homeless person comes to me, says, give me a dollar. And they start quetching him out, what are you going to do with it? And why don't you work? It's forbidden. How much holding out his hand you have to give?
I guess it would be good if we can do it. You know, first of all, imagine, are we giving a naked chick from pear in our society now? We do? No. Why not? Do we give what? what? You know, from the field, you're not permitted to take up everything in your field. Uh, it's awesome, what? I'm sorry, what? You know, the Torah, and the Torah, according to the Torah, you're not permitted when you... When you harvest your crops, you can't take from the corners of the fields and things that fall off that you that you have uh, uh, you know sheared or whatever you have to leave but that's not uh, it's a lot you know to, it's not done today I don't know why not so, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they, they had to is because it's not because the Gimon says it says all of Israel has to be in Israel in order to be Mechuyev and all those laws you know <laughs> and if all of Israel isn't here then they're not valid yet. But, it, but it's even a question of, like, would you extend, you know, just like there's Maser Ksakhi, because there used to be Maser, because there was Maser, so then we have the model of Maser Ksakhi. Yeah. Should we extend, like, a ship of pay up from beyond, and things like that, and yoga belt from beyond just, it used to be, all the wealth was agricultural. Now the wealth is, uh, a lot of it is industrial. Yeah. So, so what do you call the corners of your money? Yeah, exactly. What, and, and should we try to be... Now you see, the corners happens to be Mamish Nealoch in the field. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. The nicer that's taken off from the fruits and vegetables is taken to a pit and buried. And maybe if there was a sun header in they could maybe give that to poor people instead of burying. And you see, the thing is because the miser belongs to. No, no, all the, all the mice is, is Trumme. No, Trumme, not mice, Trumme. Trumme is mamish for the coin, and that you're not permitted to eat. Ah. It's mamish chas shum chayv mise. Heavy stuff, yeah. It has to be destroyed. Yeah. Mice only, obviously, mice is, mice you can, mice doesn't have, the fruit has, has no special laws. But Trumme is mamish, it's holy. And you, you're not permitted to even to touch it when you're not pure, when you're not there. Uh, you didn't go to the mikveh. So what else? Which is very important for us to know at this minute. On the other page, Wolf, this is a very important thing to know. Tomorrow you're learning about Kivita for Aim, it's also important. Yeah? Just you. Yeah, let's give us, you see, let's see, we're learning about Stuk, I hope it'll give you a little taste. So you'll keep on learning. There are books out now, Mamish, on, on all the laws of Stuk, and you can, Mamish, get into it. Or there's Mamish laws on, on my sex surfing. Mika's right, there's two, three books were just printed on all the laws of of the tenth of money. Okay, I'm reading it loud. There are eight levels in Stoker, one is higher than the other. Okay. There is one level which is higher than anything in the world. When you take a poor Hidele, the noise in the matona alvor, oise shudvis, 
the biggest stoker in the world is not when you keep on giving him money, when you help him to get on his feet. Let's think about that. You know, I'm, I'm, I have to tell you something. Really, you know, some of us don't know. You know, we hear, we hear of the Satma Rebbe. We think the Satma Rebbe was a big fanatic and he must have been a terrible person. Who knows? I want you to know that the biggest Badstuk of the last generation was Satma Rebbe. Mamish, the biggest Badstuk. Awesome. You know, Mamish, he blessed a few Yidin of his Chesidim who went to take the St. Paolo, the Yid Moskowitz, a billionaire. And uh, he gave the Satma Rebbe a checkbook. He says, any amount in the world, I'll cover it. And here I want you to know something. Also very important. The Satma Rebbe was a big canoe, right? But this is only officially. When it came between him and another person, Mama, she loved every yid. And this is a story I heard from someone who knows this person. One of the biggest top non-religious Chiloni Zionists in Israel. Remember, all our children shall be well. His child got very sick. And he mamish needed the next, he came to New York, and he needed $20,000 the next morning for the operation. And the operation had to take place because, God forbid, if, if it's the day after, it's too late. He comes to New York, you know, all the big Zionists, you know, they're not so fast, and coming out is $20,000. So someone says to him, the only person who will give it to you on the spot, Satma Rabbi. He says, I'm afraid I'll go to Satma, they'll knock me off, who knows what they're doing to me, they'll find out my name. But people tell him, there is nobody else to go to. He comes to Satma Rebbe, and Satma Rebbe Mamish, he, he knew who he was. Satma Rebbe greeted him with so much sweetness. Unbelievable. He says to my, my child is sick, Satma Rebbe says, how much do you need? 20,000. Says to the Gabba, give me, give me the checkbook. Give it to him right away. Without saying a word. But what I want to share with you. Sad enough, you know. Sad enough, you know. A lot of Sad Maxim today in Brooklyn are not really the highest Sad Maxim. It's never what was left over in the camps. I want you to know there is a group of Sad Maxim in Uruguay. Uruguay in South America is the sea taught of Satma, but they all are millionaires. Mamish millionaires. Okay, I'm arriving in Uruguay. I'm arriving at night. It was Monday night, and Tuesday night is my concert. I'm arriving, and then I said to the E to pick me up in the airport. Tomorrow's Cheshkodesh. Um, so he says, okay, you know, for you, you want to have a mix when everything goes to Satma Bismarck. I don't have a black hat. So good. I'm coming sudden to Smelush, and suddenly when I got there, I realized I didn't change my money yet to Uruguay money. And the taxi driver doesn't speak English. I just gave him the piece of paper with the address. And he wants, he doesn't even know what to do with dollar bills. I'm going to the Smelush, and I say, Yidin, you know, I just came from New York and they don't have Uruguay money on me, and I have this taxi outside, if someone could change me American money, you know? I'm telling you, Mamish counted. 14 people went out. Mamish trying to get in front of each other to have the mitzvah of paying my taxi. Mamish. I'm going to the mikvah, I come out, and then the president of the shul comes up to me. He says, I want to talk to you private. Listen to this. Unbelievable. He takes me out on the street and takes me for a little walk. He says, I don't know who you are. And you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I just want to tell you one thing. I don't know what brings you to Uruguay. If it is because you have no panosa, I'll give you panosa. If you have a wife and children, I'll give you money for the ticket and bring them here. It's not to be believed, right? Not to be believed. 
He says, I, I don't know who you are, and if you don't want to tell me, you don't have to tell me. It's good art, right? He thought, maybe I came to Uruguay because I'm running away from something, right? I couldn't believe it, right? But then, I says, this, I can tell you, my name is Shlomo Kalba. I said, Shlomo? Have all your cassettes. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not the important part. The important part is, the mamish stuck. You know what stuck is? It didn't say to me, here you have $100. He says, you need panosa, I'll give you panosa. Put you on your feet, right? You have a wife and children, I'll bring them here. So the highest stoker is not to give one a dollar. The highest stoker in the world is to put them back on their feet. They should be self-sufficient. Pochus Mizeh, listen to this, it's very important. Less is if your mamish gives stoker. But you make sure that the poor man does know that you gave it to him. And you don't know whom you're giving, and you also make sure the poor man does know. That Mamish, you're giving Mamish in the air, and the poor man gets it. But also, you know, today everybody gives for UJA and things. A Kurdish can know this is not such a good, good plan. Because UJA really doesn't give in the right place, right? or any of those people should live long and happy, then it's less. If the person who gives knows who is giving, but the person who receives it doesn't know who it is. But it says, I want you to know that the G'dayla HaChachomim, the great wise people, they would go still ahead secretly and throw money under the doors of the poor people. But then, it's even a deeper thing. What they did, they would walk on the street and have like a little, a lot of money behind them, like in a little, uh, you know, how do you say sardine, and um, in a bed sheet. In a sack. In a sack. And when they see a poor man, they just throw it down and run away. So the poor man picks it up, he doesn't have to say thank you. Unbelievable. Then it's less of this is if you give to the poor man before he asks you. That's very, very important. <coughs> when you see a poor man, why do we have always to wait till they ask us? You see a poor man, you know he needs it. Less of it is if you wait till he asks you. Less of it is if you give him a little bit, but at least you give it with great joy. Less of it is if you give it to him, but in a sad way. It's unbelievable. Then it says, for alcohol ponim, lo ispai odem, this is heavy. Brothers and sisters, it's heavy stuff. If a person gives stoker, he should not be pride himself in it. Heartbreaking. You know, they make a big dinner for Brother Moshe, who gave $100,000. His mom is against Shonoch. And not only he says, not only he doesn't get get reward for it in heaven, he gets punished for it. It's heavy. But then he says, if a person gives stoker and he wants to hang up a name in shul, that's okay. No, you know, a little plaque in shul says it's in honor of uh, my father, my mother, that's 100% okay. 